I'm going to tell you about my best friend when I was in third grade. But first, I'm going to explain what happened to me in first grade. Um, those of you who know me kind of thought I was kind of a mess as a little kid, and I was, and I acted out a lot. And there were two of us in first grade. It was me and this kid named David Mingus, and we both were like kind of a little bit out of control. But David Mingus had this thing where he would, he'd get like two Kleenexes and then twist up the little things and put them in his nose. And he'd do this like this kind of dance, like, and then he would send them flying like beautiful ghosts all over the first grade classroom. And it was, it was amazing. And then David Mingus got sent to special school. And, and I realized like a canary in the coal mine, I'm next. Like, I, this is, I'm going to be the next one to get sent there. So I kind of behaved for a little bit. And then in third grade, this kid named Rick Knuppel is in my third grade class, and he's a new kid. And he's got like a lot of cool wacky pack stickers on his, on his folder. I don't even know if you, remember, if you remember what those are. But it was pretty cool. And I still remember the first thing I said to him is like, you know, your name is almost like, it's almost got the word nipple in it. And he goes, isn't that cool? <laughs> I was like, oh, wow. And as you can imagine it, he and I kind of became friends on the spot, and we were so silly that my sisters would never hang out with us because we just got too silly together. I mean, really bad silly. It's all going to get a lot dumber from here because, like, we were driving. His mom was driving us back from a movie one time, and the song, um, Oh, Venus, you know, Oh, Venus. And every time it'd come, he'd go, Oh, penis to me, and he would do that. And, uh, and he would, it could crack me up every time. And then one time we were, he was a latchkey kid, so we'd go to his house and watch TV a lot. And we would just, we were really stupid, um, I guess we were third graders, and we would say, I gotta go potty a lot, because that was like our thing. And one time we said, I gotta go potty, we were watching TV, and the guy on the TV goes, whoa, no, like that. And it became a game that we would play, where we would just call it the I gotta go potty game, and we would go in front of a TV, and just say, I gotta go potty, and then listen to what the people had to say. So it'd be like, I gotta go potty, and the guy would be like, Jim, I think it's a terrible idea. And we would just, we could do it for like an hour. So, it was, it was a real game. And then we had this one, so it was. We had this other song, we would dance to it, to be like, boom, 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 I gotta go bathroom, I gotta go potty. It was like that. So, that's kind of how we were. So, here's where our troubles began. You can look this up, uh, this might make you think this is more of a truth because you can look this up. In, in the mid-70s when I was that age, Wonder Bread had this, this whole campaign about, uh, had these two loaves of bread and they were called the Fresh Guys and then like ladies would come in and squeeze them because only ladies shop back then and they would squeeze them and they'd make a noise and they'd be like, ooh, they gave us the squeeze test. See how fresh we are? So Rick Knuppel and I, I guess this is in fourth grade, we started doing that to the non-existent breasts of our fourth grade classmates, and we got in trouble for it. <laughs> so we get sent to the principal's office, and the principal, you know, like before you get sent there, they give them some idea what's going on, and the principal's like, can you explain why you thought this was okay? And we start explaining the commercial. <laughs> well, no, there's these bread things, and they're doing all this thing, and it's a squeeze test. He goes, no, 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 that, that doesn't make it okay. No more squeeze tests, okay? And it was the mid-70s, so instead of going to jail, we just went back to school. We didn't do it anymore. <laughs> and then, it was about two weeks after that, Rick Knuppel and I are like walking home from school, and these guys kind of roll up. They're like people in a car, so they're older than us, because we were nine. And they're like, what are you kids doing? And we were just like, we're walking around. We're like, yeah, do you guys like, do you guys smoke or anything? And we're like, no. I'm like, hey, we're going to Adventureland. You want to go? And I'm like to Rick Knuppel, they seem nice. And Rick Knuppel's like, no, this is a bad idea. Remember how, like, we're not supposed to ever get in cars with people? And I was like, oh, yeah. So we go to school. And we tell some kids in the school that, and they tell our teacher that. And then our teacher hears of it and says, wait, did some people, grown-ups in a car, try to get you to go in a car with them? We're like, yeah. We're like, you need to go tell the principal. So we go down to the principal. And he is really concerned. He's sitting at his desk. He's like, boys, I heard about that story. Can you tell me what happened? We start telling him what happened. And then in the middle of it, he realizes that we're the fresh guys. <laughs> and he's like, did you do something to make that car stop? <laughs> like, yeah. It was like all of a sudden, like, we, we were not, like he felt sorry for the people in the car because it was us. And, uh, and so I was like, I don't think we deserve to get Mystic River because we made that mistake a couple weeks ago. But anyway, so then... It's a, it's a couple weeks after that. I know, this is why we ended up having to move. So, 
So we would like, we were trying to be mini juvenile delinquents because we thought it was cool. This is like Villa Park, Illinois, where I grew up. It was kind of a, a, a mob town a little bit. And we would just, those cabs where you fill up your tires, we would just try to take them to see how many we could get. We'd have pocket pulls <laughs> of those little cabs. So we're, we go behind, there was this like mini mall by where we lived. And we, weren't, we weren't supposed to be anywhere, but we, we would just walk all over. So we're taking the things off the mini mall. We're in the back of the mini mall. Like the parking lot's out there. We're in the back, like where the dumpsters and stuff are. This old lady comes out and she goes, what are you boys doing? Because we're getting them off the car behind there. And Rick Knuppel says, we're taking the little caps off the car so we can take them. And I was like, Rick, you're an idiot. And so he tells her that. And that was like dumb mistake number one. Then she says, boys, come in here. She wants us to go in the store with her. And there was a giant field behind there. We could have run. She was 100 years old. And, and like, I don't know why we didn't, but I think we thought all grown-ups knew each other since then she saw our faces. She would tell our parents. So instead of running, we go in there. She calls the fucking police. Ah. And this is the first time I heard this word. She goes, I had two juvenile delinquents. And I was like, Rick, that sounds bad. Ah. And she calls, she calls the cops. They come in the store. It was like this ladies' clothes store. I think, you know, it was the first time I've ever been in one of those without my mom. And the cops come, we walk out there, and then we had this other friend, David DeAngelis, and his sisters and their mom were there. And they see us getting like perp walked out of Rory's, and we're fucking nine years old. They put us in a cop car, and they drive us to the police station, and I am freaking out. I am really, really freaking out. And Rick can tell I'm freaking out. And so he just taps my shoulder, because of the cops in the front, and he just taps my shoulder, and I turn around, and he goes, I gotta go bathroom. <laughs> And it really did make me feel a little bit better. And, uh, and then, I, I mean, I, I, won't, I won't keep going because there is more. The problem is that they drove us, and I had to call my mom at the police station, and then we lived in the border of two towns, and I told my mom the wrong place to go, and then she was really mad when she got there, and blah, blah, blah. But long story short, about, I guess it was about four years ago, I finally got back in, Rick, in touch with Rick Canupo, who lives in Phoenix, Illinois, and his name still is looks like the word nipple pretty close k-n-u-e-p-p-l you can look them up and i got in touch with him and i said hey dude i mean I'm, there's so much i want to say but remember we were in the back seat and you, you cheered me up and i was freaking out and he goes dude you're my best friend oh. Oh. 